Hi, I'm Eric Simons. I'm the co-founder and CEO of StackBlitz. If you have never used StackBlitz before, it's an online IDE for rapid web development. So if you've ever used something like CodePen, um, th think of it like CodePen on steroids. You have like full NPM support, you can import packages, you actually have web pack loaders running. And we've actually got something pretty cool coming out in Q2 that actually lets you run all of Node.js inside of your browser. So for the first time ever, you're gonna actually be able to run entire Node.js tool chains like GraphQL servers, all these amazing new innovations coming out inside of the browser security sandbox and it's incredibly fast and super easy to use. And so today I, what I want to do is I'm going to talk to you about Stackblitz Enterprise, which is uh, in short all the power of Stackblitz just behind your firewall. It's just a very simple Kubernetes based installer. So it runs again on-prem or in your VPC behind your VPN. It integrates with your SSO providers like SAML based and it can connect to your internal artifactory or Nexus registry for NPM. Uh, it can also connect to Bitbucket, GitLab and GitHub for doing any Git operations you want to do. So a lot of companies that uh, we work with, they use StackBlitz to accelerate and efficiently scale their organizations. And the way that they do this is they actually will embed StackBlitz in their documentation. So it's very popular for design systems to have live examples, right? Because you want to disseminate this information and make it really easy for people to adopt your design system. And some uh, great examples of projects that use StackBlitz that you can actually check out. Uh, one, I believe this uh, RxJS, um, I believe this was actually made by Netflix. And you can actually see this here. Um, all the examples in the RxJ, uh, RxJS docs actually use StackBlitz for them. So if you click on them, you can actually see this is running and I can uh, uh, run this code. And you see when I click, it's doing, uh, doing the actions in the code. So uh, RxJS is uh, one of the projects that uses us in the, in the public uh, world. Another one is from the Google Chrome team with uh, Lit Element. They actually use Stackblitz for live examples, helping people uh, get familiar with the Lit uh, Element API surface. So you can just go in here and just start typing and see it automatically reload. So it provides users a really fast way to get familiar with what this thing is before they have to download it. Makes it really easy for debugging as well, because uh, a lot of teams will have you know a team of uh, especially in enterprise companies there'll be maybe a team of 10 20 people or something that are working on the design system or a library and they're responsible for it but they just get overloaded with bug reports right and a lot of bugs aren't even bugs it's just people who didn't actually uh, uh who are confused right and so what's nice about forcing people to have a stack blitz link or recommending people to have a stack blitz link with every uh, issue that they're filing in JIRA or GitHub or whatever have you, is that it gives you an instant environment to open it up and see, first of all, is this even a bug? And second of all, have an instant environment where you can actually debug what is going wrong with this thing. And so uh, over in the public market, um, we do a lot of work with Google and the Angular team makes heavy use of stack blitz. So if I were to click on the issues tab here and create a new issue, file a bug report, one of the first things that they ask for is give us a minimal reproduction with Stackblitz. They, they won't even look at bugs anymore uh, that, that do not have a Stackblitz link. And they've had over 40,000 issues filed and Stackblitz has been a, a key part of how they manage that workload. Um, and both internally at, at Google and other companies, Stackblitz is, is empowering them to, to efficiently scale their development organizations. And finally, this is a great environment just for rapidly prototyping ideas. You know, if you want people to try out building something with your uh, design framework, every StackBlitz URL is actually publicly hosted. So you can just share it with anyone you want. They can open it up. So you can loop designers into the mix or other key stakeholders in your projects and say, hey, does this look good? And you can actually, you know, make changes, hit save, and they'll see it instantly reflected anywhere they are in the world, as long as they're on your company VPN. Uh, they'll be able to access it. So uh, now for, for the fun stuff, this is coming out in Q2. Um, Stackwitz is about to get a lot more powerful. For the past year, we've been working really hard uh, with uh, the Chrome team and some other folks uh, to bring the first operating system made in WebAssembly to the browser. And it's less than a megabyte and it boots up and uh, boots up Node.js in your browser in a couple hundred milliseconds. It's, it's kind of remarkable. And it, it kind of blows the lid off of what you can do with a tool like Stackblitz. Because if you look at other tools in the market like Code Spaces or even like things like Code Sandbox, when you want to run server code like a GraphQL server or Apollo or Next.js, they actually have to spin up a real server to do that work. And if that's behind your firewall, 
that's a huge security risk. That's some stuff that your DevOps teams are gonna have to manage and make sure they stay up and that it's, those things don't get infected by, because they're arbitrarily executing code. It's a total nightmare. And by being able to actually run containers, Node.js containers in your browser, it gets all the same benefits of what makes things like, you, the, the small things like CodePen great. It's incredibly fast. There's no latency. It actually works entirely offline. Uh, the second thing is it's very, very secure. It's actually more secure than your own local environment because all the code execution is happening within the Chrome security sandbox. So it can't break out and download things to your computer and install a daemon or something. It's, if, you, if something's going wrong, you can just command W your tab, boom, it goes away. So let's go ahead and let's start by opening up a brand new Nest.js application. And for those who aren't familiar, Nest.js is one of the most popular frameworks for building backend applications in the JavaScript ecosystem, and especially in Angular because it also uses TypeScript and dependency injection and a lot of shared uh, technical decisions there. And uh, this is stackbits.com. I have a special feature flag that you can get too. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and open this. And this is happening really fast, but you're gonna notice a big thing here. You've got a terminal. This is the first time you're seeing terminal in stack blitz and already it has mounted our operating system done a full npm install and booted this nest.js application in our browser right so to kind of walk you through what just happened there in the past you know couple of seconds i'm gonna go ahead and just refresh this page it's gonna start this process over uh boom operating system booted boom install just finished of the npm modules this is a fresh install on every page reload right and now it's just executing our nest.js server and it starts up it's pretty incredible, way faster than a local machine could even do this, right? Now, a really cool thing about what's going on here is every, on every page load, we're building that container up from the ground up. And so what that means is, you know, how many times have you had to, had to like RMRF your node modules because something gets wacky in there, right? This eliminates that problem. So to, to demonstrate this, uh, in this uh, 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 CLI right now, I can actually, nest is installed and that's why it's green so I can hit enter and uh, nest will execute, right? What, what happens if something gets messed up and you know, let's, I'm just gonna go ahead and RM, RF my node modules. And uh, so if I ls-l, it's not in there anymore. So if I type nest, it shouldn't work and it doesn't. Uh-oh, what do I do? Well, with our web container technology here backing this, I can refresh this entire development environment the same way I do a web application. I just go ahead and hit the refresh button. And it's gonna bring me back to a fresh, clean state every single time. So can you imagine you know, having this sort of experience, not just for live examples, but for day-to-day -day development. When someone wants you to review a branch, you, know, you don't wanna pull that down and uh, you know, stash your changes and install the stuff, right? This gives you reproducible environments like we've never seen before which is pretty amazing. It doesn't stop there. It, what, what makes this an actually even better environment than your own local machine is that we can actually now use the same dev tools that we use to debug our front applications to actually debug our backend applications. So to kind of show you a, a, an example of what I'm talking about here, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up in a, in a new window. Um, and so what's going on here is we've actually mapped the Node.js server API to the service worker API. So this is actually just a service worker over here doing its thing. And um, on this page, uh, what I'm gonna do is instead of just returning this get hello, I'm gonna go throw a debugger statement here. Um, and I need to kill the server because I'm gonna have to restart it in order to do this. And uh, well, actually, real quick, I'm gonna change this to say, I wanna change the, uh, this to say hello ngconf. Because I want just to, to be visually different. So I'm gonna restart the server. What should happen, right? We have a debugger statement that in this file that's gonna handle the request that comes in, but it shouldn't actually resolve the request until we step through the debugger, right? You know, on local, if you had to, if you wanna to connect to the Node.js debugger, it's kind of a huge pain, you know, really uh, not a great experience. But with uh, StackBlitz v2, because we're running Node.js in your browser, just open up DevTools, boom. We're live debugging a Node.js application here. This request, you can see over here, this request is hanging because uh, I'm gonna need to step through this, just like any other JavaScript code I, you know, when I'm building a front end app. I can go and inspect what's going on here, what are all the variables, what's in the scope, right? You can see what the request is, the incoming message. And uh, you know, why don't we go ahead and step through it and keep, keep your eye over here as I step through this request, right? Boom, you see it, it goes through. So you know, this is kind of mind, mind bending, right? But 
this is just a debugging at a whole nother level for Node.js applications that, that simply hasn't been possible before. And you don't have to install anything. You don't have to install a Chrome extension to make this work. It, the dev tool is already built into your browser. So uh, it's pretty amazing. So it really blows the lid off of the, the types of you know, uh, applications that you can build with Stackbits. You can use this for building your storybook you know, UI components. You can use it for building out your Nest.js backend APIs. You can use this for another example I've got off the bat because it's so fast to boot these servers. I'm just gonna open up one up right now. I wasn't planning on showing this, um, but hey, why not? GraphQL server, let's go ahead and boot this up, right? Um, look at that, already booted. Just simple lines of JavaScript here. I can execute this, uh, this command, uh, let me go ahead, I'm gonna close this up. I'll change, you know, really simple. I can come in, I can change this to say again, hello ng-conf, hit save, and then uh, I'll go ahead and just type node server.js. I think that's the command to, to restart the server here. So it's uh, rerunning on port 4000. So if I go ahead and hit the run button, there you go, All right? So again, whole bunch of different types of applications are now possible to run in this, not just for live prototyping and debugging, but for actually real development. And to give you kind of the ultimate example of this, I'm gonna go ahead. Um, this is something that the Chrome team recently shipped that we've integrated with and um, they've been awesome. And kind of buckle up, this one's, this this might kind of mess with your mind a little bit. It, it, it certainly does with ours. But one of the cool things they shipped recently is this FS API, which gives uh, web applications the ability to request read and write access to portions of your file system. And so to, to do this, we've actually got this button here. I can actually open up a project on my local machine. Uh, well, I do want this, this is an Angular CLI project on my local computer. And I, I wanna point out, there is no node modules folder here. I have not done an NPM install on my computer. So I, for all intents and purposes, I don't have node on my computer. I don't have NPM on my computer. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna go ahead and just open up this folder. And because node comes in with StackBlitz v2 and npm comes in with StackBlitz v2, it's just gonna open up this folder and it's gonna go ahead and do a full npm install, just like you saw before. It's gonna boot up five seconds for the entire Angular CLI to come in and it's starting up the Angular CLI now in our browser, right? It's actually starting up, you know, ng serve. It's pretty amazing. And what's even cooler is if I wanna make a change to this file, I can actually save these changes back down to my local file system, okay? And so what's amazing about this, right, is if I, let's say I, uh, uh, I've got, I wanna use VS Code for, a, for some reason, I can actually just go ahead and pull VS Code over here. I've got the same folder pulled up, okay? And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the app folder, the app.component, and I'm, I wanna change this title to SB app. Take a look at what happens when I change this over in this file. By the way, again, no no modules, so this thing's uh, throwing an error, and, and this is real VS Code, so not to be confused between stack blitz versus VS Code, because they're looking at a heck of a lot similar now, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and change this code over here, and this, by the way, correlates to this SB app running thing here, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and change this to say uh, ng-conf, and hit save, and I come back here, and you see, you see it actually pops up in the editor, I'm gonna go ahead and do, you know, vice versa. ng-comp is awesome and hit save. And you'll actually see that it pops up. And I'm gonna go ahead and just close the preview for a second here. Uh, but you can see it actually pops up between these two things. So if I just type some gibberish, this is syncing. Oop, actually, I mean, here, let's just to show it. This is syncing all my code, whether it's valid or not, between these two editors, right? Um, and so what's cool is that that means, I'm gonna go ahead and just close VS Code now. But that means is that anywhere you go, you now have Node.js and NPM with you in your browser and it can connect and have read and write access to your local file system, which is pretty incredible. And so if I go ahead and just open this back up, you can actually see that the new version of this is, is got what I wrote on my VS Code running in, pulled into the browser, recompiled with Node.js inside the browser, the operating system inside the browser and served inside the browser, right? So you can kind of imagine this being amazing for onboarding new developers to your team. Something that would take weeks to set up. Now they can OAuth with Bitbucket or GitHub or whatever you use internally, and they're up and running, right? So there's a lot of amazing new applications that become possible with this. And uh, that's all we have time for today, I think. But we are opening up a alpha testing group. And if you'd like to participate and try this out and give us your feedback and work with our core team on this, uh, go ahead and over to stackblitz.com slash v2. 
fill out the form and we'd love to have you be a part of this. This is gonna be rolling out to our enterprise customers later this year. So if, if you wanna be one of the first companies in the world to actually use this behind your firewall, our new V2 technology, um, you know, also go fill out our V2 form, but also head over to stackblitz.com slash enterprise because you can actually use Stackblitz Enterprise today with all of the great functionality that, you, that the Angular team is using it for and a whole bunch of other companies. Um, and this is gonna be just an update that we ship that you pull down and it'll just work. So uh, you can actually get that process started today and actually start uh, using the StackBlitz current functionality to supercharge your development and debugging workflows. And when V2 rolls out on-prem, it'll be available to you and you can pull it in there. So uh, really appreciate all the support and love over the past years, NG Comp. We're really excited to be here. We've been working a long time on this. We really hope that you're gonna like it. Um, can't wait to hear your feedback. Thanks so much. Have a good one. Oh, are you, you all still there? Well, um, I mean, I guess, uh, oh, I guess we do have enough time. We might, uh, we might have one more thing to show you. We actually have some great partners over at XBM. Y'all might be familiar with Angular Bootcamp and the other services they provide. They've made something pretty cool that if you are in the Atlassian ecosystem, one, you should check them out. But two, they made an add-on for Confluence that's pretty amazing and integrates Stackblitz in a way that wasn't possible before. So I'm gonna go ahead, let's go pull up their video here. So we see we're in Confluence and uh, normally it'd be difficult to embed a Stackblitz, but with this add-on, it makes it really easy. You just copy and paste the editor URL and you can pass in all the options for embedding stack blitzes that normally you'd have to go to the stack blitz UI to do these things. Then I don't even know how you would get it into Confluence, but this makes it incredibly easy. You can just save it and you can see it shows up right there. When you're ready, you can go ahead and just hit the publish button and it just works. And you can share this link with anyone. The embed shows up and it's really a great experience for you. And so if you have a design system you're trying to share or live examples, this brings it into the same workflows that your entire team is already using. It's not some other thing they have to go and check out. They can just come in here and you get to add comments and talk about the code without having to send them to another URL and uh, it's entirely in line. So feel free to give us a shout at enterprisestackbus.com or go to stackbus.com slash enterprise. And we're looking forward to chatting with you. And with that, this is actually the end of my presentation here at ng-conf. Thank you so much for having us and uh, looking forward to seeing all of you in person, hopefully sooner rather than later.